Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Lipstock. In this section on cataract surgery, we are going to talk about topical anesthesia versus block anesthesia. If you haven't first listened to the slides in the Introduction to Cataract Surgery section, please click on the link first prior to proceeding to this section. I highly recommend it. Let's first talk about topical anesthesia versus block anesthesia. Of course, we want to numb the eye for the cataract surgery so you feel no discomfort. Uh, and uh, we can do that with simple numbing drops uh, instilled in the pre-op area uh, and your eye is nicely numbed. Uh, or um, you can um, have a needle injection in the region around the eye that uh, numbs up the entire uh, area uh, including the eyelids, the eye muscles, and the eye itself. Uh, and uh, those are the two techniques that are available. Let's talk a little bit more about that. The American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, known as ASCARIS, uh, performs an annual practice pattern survey. Uh, and as far as topical anesthesia goes for cataract surgery, uh, they uh, looked at that. Um, uh, and continue to look at that every few years. In 1993, when it was uh, a new technique, 11% um, uh, of uh, surgeons were reported to be using that technique then, and all the rest were using the block anesthetic. By 2000, it really zoomed up to 50%, and in 2012, there was 75% of the surgeons uh, were using topical anesthesia. Why is that? Well, um, we can look at the advances in technology, which has uh, been a major driving force uh, enabling topical anesthetic to be used for cataract surgery. Uh, the phaco emulsification technique and the foldable intraocular lenses have led to small sutureless incisions with less surgical time and tissue manipulation. So improvements in technology have made topical anesthesia possible. What has motivated the switch to topical anesthesia? Well, first there's patient satisfaction and then there's sur surgeon satisfaction. From the patient's view, uh, they have an immediate post-op bilateral functional vision, i.e. no patch on the eye. With the block, uh, you're numbing the eyelids and so afterwards the eyelids would just droop open and the eye would get all dried out. And so at the end of the case, we just gently close the lid um, and uh, place a patch over it so it stays closed uh, and then that's removed uh, about uh, four to six hours later. Some surgeons leave it on commonly all day and remove it uh, in the office on, at the first day post-op visit. But with topical anesthesia, uh, it's, uh, there is no patch required and you're just up and at it. Uh, patients also like that there's less sedation. Uh, so faster recovery afterwards, you know, uh, with the uh, block anesthetic, uh, it hurts, uh, and so uh, you need to be put to sleep uh, for about 10 minutes uh, with the IV sedation, um, and uh, then the, uh, the injection is given, and then 10 minutes uh, later you come out of it. Uh, no surgery has been done yet, uh, but you're all nice and numbed up. Uh, the lids don't blink, the eye doesn't move, and the eyes will numb. Uh, with the um, topical anesthesia, the eye drops don't hurt, and so you certainly don't need eye, uh, deep IV sedation for that, but some patients commonly like a little bit of uh, sedation through the IV for the topical surgery just to take the edge off of things, uh, but it's mild. <clears throat> now also, uh, you're going to have less swollen, uh, swelling and redness and uh, no black and blue uh, marks on the eyelids uh, with the topical anesthesia. Uh, with the block, you're getting an injection, commonly you have a black and blue mark, and very commonly uh, the eye is going to be um, red, a little swollen. Um, with the topical anesthesia, um, when the patient leaves the OR and someone is there to take the patient home, uh, that person really can't tell which eye I did the surgery on by looking at, at the patient. Uh, and then finally, there's, um, there's no fear of pain from the block uh, anesthetic. Uh, some patients harbor some uh, fear of that. But uh, remember, when you're getting the block, you're at least put to sleep for 10 minutes so the, the injection won't hurt because you're asleep. 
Uh, now, also there's the, as we said, the surgeon satisfaction. Why are the so surgeons uh, been uh, motivated to switch to topical? Um, and uh, from their perspective, it's because of the decreased risk from uh, the needle injection and deep IV sedation. Of course, we like that the patient likes the idea of having it, but uh, we're thinking of um, uh, some uh, rare but serious potential risks uh, with, uh, with the block. You see, um, with the block anesthesia, it's a blind procedure. Um, the, the needle is injected into the socket, um, and it requires very accurate placement of that needle, and it's in a small space surrounded by delicate structures like nerves and blood vessels. Uh, so it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of uh, when a complication will occur from a block. The goal of the block anesthetic, as we said, was uh, anesthesia to numb the eye and also akinesia, a temporary paralysis of the eyelids and ocular muscles so you can't blink, squeeze, or move the eye. With topical anesthesia, the eye is numbed, but there is no akinesia, so the eyelids can blink, the, eyes, uh, the eye can move, uh, uh, but the eye is nice and numb. So let's uh, put uh, topical anesthesia and uh, a block anesthetic head-to-head -head here in different aspects. First, with uh, topical anesthesia, the drops are not painful. Uh, and with the um, needle injection, uh, that's quite painful. With uh, topical, only mild IV sedation is... Um, is used, if at all, uh, and with the needle injection, because of the pa painful aspect of it, uh, deep IV sedation is required to put the patient to sleep while the injection is given, and so then they don't feel the pain of that. Uh, as far as uh, drowsiness goes, uh, because there's only mild, uh, if any, IV sedation with the topical, only mild drowsiness occurs uh, uh, with uh, topical anesthesia, but more significant drowsiness afterwards with the IV sedation. I mean, with the um, IV sedation, deep IV sedation for the block. How about pain during surgery? Well, there's no pain during surgery with topical, and there is no pain during surgery uh, with the block. With topical, there's no redness or swelling of the eye, like we said, but with the block, it's common to, for the eye to be red and uh, swollen uh, after the surgery. And same thing for the eyelids, no unsightly bruising uh, for the lids with topical anesthesia, but it's common to have uh, black and blue type uh, lids after the uh, block. As we said, no patch is required after topical, but an eye patch is required uh, after a block. Um, and uh, there's uh, minimum risks from the mild sedation uh, with uh, topical anesthesia, uh, but there is uh, some uh, risk with the deeper um, uh, sedation uh, uh, given for the block, such as aspiration pneumonia, um, and uh, it's always uh, good to have on hand uh, skilled and experienced uh, anesthesia, uh, anesthesia staff uh, monitoring the patient when they're having a block. Um, there is um, no breathing risks with um, topical anesthesia, you're just getting numbing drops. But there are some uh, rare but uh, very serious uh, uh, risks uh, with the um, injection uh, where the needle uh, anesthetic can track up um, from the um, socket around the optic nerve and actually get to the breathing center of the brain uh, and you, the patient can stop breathing. And with a skilled, experienced anesthesia crew, they just uh, help the patient along uh, during that uh, uh, until that um, uh, numbing medicine wears off and the patient can breathe on their own again. Again, very rare, but it can occur. Um, and um, then there's also the, uh, the question of damage to the eyelids, where uh, the numbing drops is not going to do anything to the eyelids, but there is risk of the needle injection, which is being used uh, around the eyelids to numb them, uh, to have some permanent... Um, drooping of the eyelids. Again, not common, but it, it uh, can occur. Um, also, no problems with double vision um, from the numbing drops, 
but uh, the needle injection traveling through the socket can sometimes damage the muscles uh, around the eye, causing um, uh, double vision that could last uh, sometimes just temporarily, but sometimes um, for long periods of time, and occasionally it uh, needs uh, muscle surgery, eye muscle surgery, to resolve. Uh, again, that's uh, not common, but it can occur. Um, and uh, as far as uh, numbing drops go, you're not going to get bleeding in the socket, but uh, it can occasionally occur, occur with the, the needle in the socket uh, nicking a, a blood vessel uh, that you can have a serious um, uh, bleed in the socket um, that usually all that is required is to postpone the surgery uh, and uh, let that resolve and come back uh, weeks later and, uh, and then do the surgery. Uh, sometimes uh, there's so much uh, pressure uh, built up from the bleed in the socket that um, some uh, releasing uh, incisions are needed uh, around the eyelids to uh, relax the pressure that's forming on the eye. Um, uh, rare, not common, but it certainly can occur. And um, there's numbing drops are not going to do any ocular injury, but again, with the needle injection, uh, uh, the needle traveling through the uh, socket, sometimes the needle can actually puncture the eye itself and cause a very serious uh, retinal uh, problem. Uh, and uh, again, another rare occurrence, uh, but that can happen. So in 1991, topical anesthesia use began. Uh, and by 2012, 75% of Ascaris members were routinely using topical anesthesia. I began routinely using it in 1997 when it became apparent to me uh, that it was a safer uh, procedure to use for most patients. Today I do topical anesthesia on 80% of my patients, 20% who have other aspects that I know will make the surgery more complicated in advance. Uh, I'll use a block anesthetic. In that case, I think the uh, benefits of the block outweigh the risk, but in the vast majority of patients, um, uh, topical is the preferred uh, mode of anesthetic that I and 75% of the Ascaris member surger, surgeons uh, prefer to use. Um, today in Richmond, you need to understand uh, it's a bit of an aberration since uh, less than 10% of the cataract surgery being performed is being performed with topical anesthesia. Um, I cannot exactly say why, because it's unusual, uh, that uh, less than 10% uh, statistic, uh, but that's the case. Uh, and um, uh, if uh, you have a doctor uh, who's planning to do cataract surgery um, uh, for you, you should uh, at least uh, discuss uh, those aspects of, um, of anesthesia and to inquire whether they're going to use topical or block and the reasons why. Um, but at least now you have some understanding and some background knowledge so that you can understand that discussion at a higher level.